Hi, Eric Hammond here, The Joy of Homesteading. I just wanted to share the top five worst mistakes you can make when you are doing solar installations at your house for off-grid power or on-grid power. I've made a couple of these mistakes myself, so hopefully you can learn from this. If you listen to number two, you're gonna have your mind blown when you really stop to think about the efficiency that we lost. So number five, we have mono versus polycrystalline panels. China flooded the market 15 years ago with these cheap polycrystalline panels. They are not as efficient in low light conditions as monocrystalline. And now that they're getting older, they're starting to show up a lot of defects. So you're seeing crazing and snail trails all throughout it. It's hurting efficiency and you should really stay away from the polycrystalline in my opinion. The monocrystalline and a higher quality panel, if you can afford it, will always be the better choice. Number four, having no backup plan for solar. It's gonna have a period of time where it's gonna rain for a week. You're gonna have a period of time in the winter where the sun doesn't come out. If you don't have a backup plan, such as running a generator or wind power, or even uh, say tying to the grid to be able to charge your batteries, you are going to keep your batteries in a state of charge that is too low and that's gonna hurt them, especially if you have lead acid batteries. There are some solar batteries that they put activated carbon inside of the plates to help reduce sulfation, but when they stay in a low state of charge for a significant period of time, that really hurts your battery's life and that ultimately costs you money. You need a way to charge your batteries. You need a way to have power. You gotta have back. Number three, grid tie without battery backup. People make this mistake all the time. You see solar panel installations where they've tied to the grid. They're getting credits on their electricity bill and then they get to use those credits in the future and that reduces their electricity bill, which is great, except what happens when a car hits a telephone pole and knocks the power out, the grid goes down because a tree falls on the power line. When the grid goes down and you have no battery backup, you have no power. You are sitting in the dark. You can have all these solar panels sitting in your roof or in your yard and you're making zero. So big mistake. You should have some sort of battery backup. Number two, you really need to think about tying to the grid. I did not and I regret it. It would be too late to try to upgrade my equipment to be able to do so because the cost would be so prohibitive. You need to think about tying your equipment to the grid for a couple reasons. One, like we talked about with having a backup plan, the grid is a fantastic backup plan. It works the majority of time. Two, it is a battery that you can rent. If you think about your fee that you pay the electric company every month just to have power at your house, it's a battery that you can rent that has infinite capacity and you can put as much into it as you want and they will credit your electric bill back. There's not a battery that you can buy for the cost that they are able to provide you power. Lastly for that, number two, the part that you're really going to have to think about but could blow your mind is the efficiency of your panels. So my battery bank, when it's 50% charged, I can stuff all the electricity I can into those batteries and they'll be able to take it. I have 2000 watts worth of panels. My batteries are putting 2000 watts in them. As my batteries come up to 60, as they come up to 70, as they come up to 80, the amount of power that you can put into the battery is reduced. They cannot take the full amount. So even though you have 2000 watts worth of panels on your roof, if your battery is at 90%, maybe you can only put 800 watts in there. You may be losing the other 1200 watts. Now you could run things like you could run an air conditioner or you could pump water, but at some point you don't have enough things to run to use the power that's available to you. If you are tied to the grid, you get to use 100% of your panel's output all the time. You get to store that in the grid and you get to pull it back later. You get 100% efficiency out of what your panels are capable of producing. You need to think about tying to the grid. Lastly, number one biggest mistake that people make, putting
putting solar panels on your roof. You should not do this for three reasons. The first one's simple. You're putting holes in your roof. Whether you got a metal roof or you got shingles, those holes are eventually gonna leak and you're gonna have water intrusion to your house. It's gonna screw up the decking on your roof. You shouldn't put holes in perfectly good roofs. The second reason for not putting solar panels on a roof the efficiency of solar panels is quite low. It's 18 to 20% on some of the best panels. Maybe you'll get a little bit higher than that if you buy some super high quality ones, but it's really low efficiency. The thermal energy coming off the sun is huge. There's thermal efficiency of inventions that are 60% efficient. The sun hitting your roof puts an extreme amount of thermal energy onto your house that you cannot offset with the power coming out of your solar panels. So if it's a hot sunny day and you have solar panels on your roof, your roof could be 170 degrees and your air conditioners have to run really long to try and cool that house down. You would be far better ahead to plant trees, to shade your roof, to cool your house, and then buy the electricity from the electricity company, from the power company. Based on efficiency, that would be the thing to do. You would save so much more money than putting panels on your roof. Now, if you put those panels off onto a stand somewhere in your yard and you can still shade your roof with a tree, a deciduous tree in a temperate climate like we have, that would be the ideal thing to do. And then the very last thing that nobody thinks of when they put solar panels on your roof is you have to maintain these solar panels your car gets dirty just from dust and pollen that settles on it and you can't see through the windshield you can't you see all the grime over all the paint surface that happens to your solar panels your panels need cleaned at least twice a year i've noticed a 30 no a 60 percent reduction in panel efficiency just from a dirty panel to a clean panel so you got to get up on your roof and clean these panels down i like to use a uh, just half water and half white vinegar. That makes a really good uh, surface cleaner for your solar panels, but they do need cleaned. That's maintenance that most people don't talk about, you never think about. If you wanna get the most efficiency out of them, you're gonna have to get up there and clean them. What if you live in a climate where it snows? It could be potentially dangerous to get on your roof to try and clear the snow off of your solar panels. And one thing I have noticed is my roof can be covered in snow, the sun can come out, and then all the snow melts off the roof and the panels still are covered in snow. There's an air gap that runs underneath those solar panels, so they stay really cool and they're the last thing to melt. The sun could be shining, I could have lots of electricity that could be capable to me, but I can't get it because my panels are still covered in ice and snow that would be a mistake to put them on your roof where you can't get out there and just brush them off with a broom. So I hope this helps you. If you like this kind of thing, hit the subscribe button. I'm gonna be putting out more content that's related to homesteading and solar and pumping water and things that you guys are all interested in. I like to answer questions at the end of each week. So if you subscribe and you wanna ask a question, then I'll do just like a question and answer thing at the end of uh, each week, probably on a Thursday. So comment, let me know what you think, and we'll talk to you later.